Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we built ourselves the assets and the state machine that's required to allow our character to jump. We set up our platforms to be grounded, creating a brand new layer called ground, uh, and that's what we're going to use to make sure that our player is actually touching the ground. In this episode, we're going to get into code. Now, I've separated these two episodes to make sure that you guys are, are able to go back and watch the code over and over again. I know a lot of people have a problem with code. A lot of you out there are artists. You're not actually coders. Uh, and I want to make sure that you guys can see this. Now, everything is in HD, so if for some reason you're having a hard time with the code itself, expand, 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 so you're watching everything in HD on your screen, and then copy down everything that I do. In code, you can't have kind of the same. It's got to be exactly the same if you want it to work. All right, guys? So in this episode, we're going to write the code and have our player jumping at the end. Let's get started. OK, so we're going to be tackling code right now to have our player jump. If we take a look at the current state of our game, when I hit play, uh, our player falls to the ground, uh, and they kind of get stuck in this, in this uh, falling state uh, with no animation uh, behind it at all. We can still run and walk at the appropriate space, at the appropriate timing, uh, but we don't have any animation showing. And if that's the state you're in, then don't worry about it. We are in good shape. All right? So what our plan is, is to, is to write code that will create a small sphere underneath our player's feet. Uh, and if that sphere intersects with an object, like our simple platform, um, that has a ground layer, so our, our layer itself is ground, if we intersect anything with that sphere that has a layer of ground, then we're going to be considering our character to be grounded. Okay? And that means they can jump or they can you know, fall from there, etc. Uh, if we're not, if, if that little tiny circle doesn't connect with anything that's called ground, uh, then our player is either in the fall or the jump state. Okay, so that's our plan. So let's let's open up our code. Um, we're gonna we're gonna click on your soldier player on your soldier character, and uh, find your player controller. We're just gonna update that script. We're not gonna add a new script or anything like that right now. I just touched my mic. Sorry. Uh, we're not gonna add a new script or anything like that. We're just gonna use the player controller. So double click on that and open up your actual um, player controller. Uh, there's a number of things we're going to need in here. Um, everything was set up from before. A number of things we're going to need in here. We're going to need a, a couple of new parameters uh, for jumping. Um, okay, so we're going to need a couple of new things. We're going to need a bool, as I already mentioned, and we're going to call this uh, grounded. And we're going to set it equal to false. Um, it's a private variable, uh, and it's basically going to be used to hold a true or false value, uh, whether or not we're touching a grounded surface or not. Okay, and I'm setting it to false right away here. Uh, our initial conditions for our character to be to be um, starting the game is going to be off the ground slightly, and they're going to fall to the ground, and that's how we're going to start everything. Um, okay, so that's the first thing we need. Now, the second thing, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to require uh, to we're going to be required to create a small sphere underneath our character's feet, and if that sphere collides with something, then uh, that's that's a def that, that's at a layer of ground, then uh, it's going to be considered grounded. What we want to do is we want to hold. Uh, oh, two L's. We want to hold collider. Um, we want to hold an array of colliders. So that's how you make an array. An array of colliders called, uh, let's call it ground collisions. All right. And this array is going to hold uh, anything that our little tiny sphere collides with. Okay. That's what that's going to be used for. Um, now, what size is that sphere going to be? In our case here, we're going to create a, a float. Uh, that we're going to call um, ground check radius. Uh, and this is going to be the radius of the sphere that we're going to create. And let's make it into, uh, let's make it 0.2 uh, float. All right, so that's going to be the, the radius of our actual sphere. Now, we're going to need a couple more things. We're going to need, first of all, we're going to need a, uh, we're going to need a, uh, a, a layer mask, and that layer mask is going to hold anything that's in ground. Okay, so we've already created our new layer, and we're going to use that new layer, our ground layer, as our actual layer mask. So that's what we're going to be making our checks against anything that, that's in the layer mask. All right, so we're going to make a new public. Uh, this is a new public uh, variable that we're going to call. It's going to be a layer mask, and we're going to call it. Uh, let's call it ground ground layer. I guess is good enough. Ground layer. Okay. Uh, one more thing that we're going to need to do, and I should have done this in the last episode, I didn't think of it. Um, we're going to create a public uh, transform, 
Uh, and this public transform is where we're going to actually be drawing drawing the little circle or the little the little sphere. All right, and we'll just call this um, ground check. Ground check is fine. Ground check. Uh, and the last thing that we're going to need to know is a public variable and how oops public and it's how high the character can jump. So it's going to be a float, uh, and it's going to be uh, let's call it let's call it a jump. You can call it jump power, jump height, whatever you want. Jump height, all right? And it's basically going to be the amount of force that we apply to our character to fl make him fly up in the air. Now, there's a couple of things that I have to add right now. We've already added our ground layer in the last episode. I haven't added my ground check yet, so I'm going to save this. File save. And I'm going to go back to my, my actual character. And what I want to do is I want to go in here, I want to say create, and I'm going to say create empty, all right? Uh, and I'm going to change this name right away to, um, let's call it check ground. Check ground location, maybe. Check ground location. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but I'm going to give it a good name. Check ground location. All right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at 0, 0, 0. Oops, I shrunk that instead. I'm going to reset this so it's at 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to add it to my soldier, okay? Bam. So right now, it's going to be located somewhere underneath the actual uh, the actual top layer of my soldier. And that's 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 where I want it to be. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, this object to be able to check and see, to, to draw my little circle. And it's going to go, um, it's, it's wherever this object is, is where we're going to actually draw our little circle. First thing I want to do also is I want to go up to this little thing that looks like a box right here. I'm going to click it. And I'm going to make it, let's make it green. Um, and I'm going to make it so I can, I can see it visually. And I'm going to go to my 2D mode for a second here. Go into 2D. And I'm going to try and align this ground check with my character's feet. And all I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is with ground check selected, I'm going to reset its value. Reset. And I'm going to make sure that it's somewhere at the character's feet, kind of where I like it. And I'm going to use this to move it down a little bit. Right about there is, is fine for my ground check. OK, that's fine. At this location, we're going to be drawing a, our little tiny sphere. Okay, let's go back to our code. Now we've got that set up. Our code, boom. Okay, so uh, now we've got all of our variables set up, and that's awesome. Now we're going to have to start writing the actual code to allow our player to jump. And we are going to add that code to our fixed update. Uh, oh, there's one more thing that we really need to do. Actually, before I forget, right away. Um, we already saved this once, and we just created our ground check. Uh, we do have to go back to our player, so click on our soldier, uh, and make sure you find uh, <laughs> this this stuff here. We're going to have to remember to, to do this. I might as well do it right now. Um, we're going to set up our, our, our different layers here. We've got a whole bunch of different public... Um, uh, public variables that we're going to have to set up right away. If we don't change them, then uh, this is not going to work. And I always forget to change them, so I'm going to change them right now. First of all, let's say uh, our ground layer is our ground. We already know that. Our ground check is, on our soldier, the ground check location. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drop it. And let's give it a value of, I don't know, let's just try 200 for now. Uh, I forget what I put in there last time. Um, let's try 200 for now and see how that works. Now, right now, nothing's going to happen. Let's go back to our code for a second. Boom. Uh, let's go back to our code for a second, and let's go into our fixed update right here. Uh, let's put it at the top right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the actual code to be able to uh, check and see whether or not we're grounded. And as we checked, as we talked about before, we had something called uh, ground collisions right here. Uh, ground collisions. And ground collisions was an array of, of uh, colliders that our little tiny sphere uh, is connected to or is touching. So, <clears throat> sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to use a, a already created physics. So we're going to use a the, the physics library and we're going to use something called overlap sphere. And the overlap sphere function does exactly what we want it to do. It'll draw a little tiny sphere and it will return uh, any of the colliders that are intersected by that sphere. Okay? It takes a number of, par of parameters. Now the first thing it's going to take is where we're going to draw the sphere. In our case we already know. Uh, we called it ground check. Uh, and that was a transform. So we're going to look at the dot position. 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 Uh, so wherever the ground check is currently located at our character's feet, um, then we are going to draw a little sphere there. Now the next thing it takes, the next variable it takes, is the radius. And we already have that too. We called it uh, ground, my god, I can't type, ground check radius. All right, perfect. 
The last thing it's going to take is a, a layer, uh, is the layer itself. And in our case, um, we, are, we have a public thing that we called uh, ground layer right here. So ground layer. All right, so perfect. So this does everything we want it to do. It's going to draw the little circle at the position we want it to. It's going to have a certain radius, and it's going to check it against the colliders that we've already named ground. Great. Now, what are we going to do with that information? If our ground collision, and as I mentioned before, ground collisions uh, is an array. So if the length of that array is greater than 0, that means that it's collided with something. It's returned some value. If it's 0, that means it didn't collide with anything. So if our length is greater than 0, then we want to set our grounded state, grounded state to true, all right? Because we are actually touching something. Otherwise, so else, any other thing, if our grounded collision's length is 0, uh, then our grounded is going to be equal to false. OK, great. Now. The last thing that we have to do is uh, we have to set our animation state. So if we take, if we go back here and let's take a look for a second, uh, we go to our animator. Remember, we had our grounded state, and the way we left uh, any state to go to this is if we were true, we went here. If we're false, then we we came out of that. All right. Uh, so right now, if our grounded state is true, we're going to go up in here and uh, we want to set that animation. So in our fixed update, we're going to say set. Uh, sorry, not set. We're going to say my anim dot set and it's a bool because ground was a bool uh, and it was called uh, small g grounded grounded uh, and I want it so I'm setting that bool and I want to set it with our value grounded all right so don't get confused there um, it's two different groundeds one is the is the boolean parameter that we have in our animation state machine and the other one is our grounded boolean that we have here in our actual uh, in our actual uh, script. All right, so far, so good. Our character should be able to, to land, all right? Should be able to land now on the ground. Now, uh, there's a couple more things we have to do. First of all, this will take care of falling only because we haven't, we haven't given our character uh, the ability um, to, to actually jump yet. And we can either do that right here in fixed update uh, or, we can do it in, or we can do it in update. It's up to you, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, let's just do it in fixed update. It doesn't really matter that we have all of our code in the same location. Uh, so basically, what we want to do is we want to we want to pull the characters. Um, we want to pull the characters. Uh, uh, button pushing, okay, the input, just like we did whenever we were doing the whenever we were doing the the previous uh, information stuff, like whenever we were doing the stuff previously where we were trying to find out if the character was running or walking. So once again, we're going to pull whether or not the character is actually touching something. So first thing we're going to check, oops, if and if we are grounded, grounded, uh, then we can jump. That's what we already said, all right? So if we're grounded and, and bam, double ampersand, uh, the, the player has pushed a button, in our case, the input, and we're going to use the get axis. Um, there's already one set up called jump. So we're going to use get axis, uh, quotations, jump. And that's already set up for us, and it's mapped to the space bar. Uh, if the jump value is greater than 0, then we actually want our character to jump. Uh, bam, that's good. We want our character to actually jump. OK, now, uh, if that's the case, we want to first of all set right away my, oops, my anim uh, to, our, we want to set our bool again. So we're doing it down here, yes, but we want to do it once again right here. Uh, we want to set the bool uh, immediately, set bool uh, grounded um, to false. Oops, I should have put it in quotations. Quotations grounded to false. False. All right, and we, we can actually avoid this. We can actually avoid all this crazy typing I'm doing by right away setting our ground because we actually want to set our grounded, grounded to false right away anyway. So grounded is set to my God, false. There we go. All right, so <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, we're setting our grounded to false right away, and then we can actually instead of putting false here, we can just put grounded here. So we can always put in our grounded value. Grounded. Um. Okay. Now, uh, so we're going to be setting it twice. So. This is not necessary to do. We're setting it once within here, and we're setting it again right away. Uh, it's not really necessary, but we're going to go through and do it anyway. Uh, so uh, the second that we actually set our ground at the false, um, we're immediately going to add to our rigid body a force. And that force is what's going to throw our character up in the air. Uh, so we're going to use the my rigid body, which we, which we found in an earlier episode by getting the component here, my RB, um, dot uh, add force. All right, and we're going to use the add force function to apply a force to our character. In this case here, we're going to be applying a, a, a force um, from below, uh, so we're gonna. This is gonna be a new. 
We only want to apply it in the y director direction. New vector three. All right, and this has an x and a y and a z component, which are going to be associated with the x, y, and z of a transform of our, or sorry, of a rigid body force. Uh, and it's going to have a zero in the x. We don't want it moving anything in the x. We want it to be entirely in the y, and we want it to be a value of jump height. I called it height. All right, and in the z, we want nothing. All right, so we are simply applying a force to our rigid body only in the y direction. All right, bam, and that's all we really need to do. Okay, once we've got that going, our character will actually fly up in the air. Now, there's one more thing I want to take a look at. I'm going to save this, and we've already got our, our parameters all set up. So when I hit play here, our character should fall. Oops, hit play. Oh, I have error. Sorry, let me check and see what my errors are. Uh, variable ground check has not been assigned. Yes, it has. Clear this. Oh, what did it say? Unexpected symbol. Okay, on line, the way you read this, whenever you find errors, because things don't always work out the way we want to, whenever you look for an error, look on line 40. All right. Line 40 right here. I am missing. I am missing one of these. Boom! All right. File. Save. All right. Let's go back here and hit play. And as long as I have no errors, play, my character will fall. Oh, I turned off maximize on play. Our character will fall, hit the ground, and go into his, into his idle, which is exactly what we want to happen. Now, there's only one other consideration to make when our character is in the idle like this. First of all, he can run. Great, we've got all of our animation back. That's exactly what we wanted to do. He can, whoa, oh, now that's a really high jump. That is a really high jump, and we've got a couple of problems here. And it was kind of a floaty down, too. Like, look at how high he jumps. He jumps so high. Now, that's a lot of force. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into my file. Is it under here? No, it's under Edit. And I'm going to go to my Project Settings, and I'm going to find in here Physics. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my value of my gravity. I kind of want to make a game uh, that is a little bit... Uh, I want to make a game that is a little bit... Um, Snappy, all right. I don't. I don't actually want to have it uh, not snappy. Uh, like I, I want it to be like kind of like falling faster and jumping lower. So I'm going to change my gravity value. And all I did is I went to Edit. I found Project Settings, and I went down to Physics, and this other window pops up. And I'm going to change this value to let's try negative thirty. Let's see if that gives us a better value. When I hit play, when I jump now, I don't jump as high, and I fall much faster. And you can see I've kind of got a delay as as I as I move into the into the idle sometimes. So we're going to change that in a second as well. We're going to change that through something special that I like to do. Um, okay, so that said, uh, that's all working now. And I can run, and I can walk, all right, and I can jump. Now the problem is, when I am running, and I'm walking, and I'm jumping, uh, my speeds change. So watch what happens. If, I, if, I, if I'm walking, and I jump, and I let go, I, I move faster. And I don't want that. I want the jump speed to be exactly the same every single time. So I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to find where I set my value for my for my horizontal movement, which is right here, if sneaking. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if sneaking and grounded. All right, I'm going to add this in here. Amper ampersand grounded. So that means if I'm grounded and I'm sneaking, then I can move at a certain velocity. But let me save that file save. But as soon as I jump, I'm going to automatically jump with my running velocity. That's all I changed there. So I'm going to go over here for you guys. So I'm going to walk this way, jump, and you can see that I am, I am, I am moving at a far uh, greater pace in the air than the walking speed. And that's what I want. I want my character to jump at the same as his running speed. So all I did is added in this line and grounded. All right, so if I'm sneaking, if, if my sneaky character is there and I'm grounded, then walk. Otherwise, always move at the run speed. So there is one last thing that I want to take a look at, and and there's a couple of different ways of handling this. Right now, what we've got going on here, uh, let me just play this again. Um, our transitions between our walk and our run are not the best. I mean, you can see there's kind of some stuttering in there. Uh, when he starts up, sometimes there's kind of a pause as he starts up. Uh, that stuff can all be controlled a uh, number of different ways. Um, it can be controlled by, by changing the transitions, so you can make your transition smaller, uh, or you can drag them down to the front, like if I go like this all the way down to here, I mean it's not going to change anything right now, uh, from idle, and you can change for each of the each of the different states, from my run, change them each one, alright? Uh, you can change how quickly it goes from each state by, by changing the transition size, 
Uh, same thing in here, I can make it a little tighter if I want to. I can make this transition a little smaller if I want to. Uh, and yeah, that this will all change exactly how this is, is working. Um, there's something else I'm going to do, and this changed my animation uh, the way I want it to look. Something else I'm going to show you right now. If we take a look at our, let's go back to our scene. If we take a look at our actual uh, simple platform, um, there is something that's available in there called called the uh, called. Uh, let's actually take a look at the appropriate location. And if we take a look at the ground itself, there's something in the collider right here that's called a a physics material. And the physics material can be created very very simply. All right, but I'm going to go to my project itself. And I'm going to go to my materials folder. And I'm going to create a brand new material. I'm going to say create, and I'm going to create a brand new physics material right here. Physics material, and the physics material will allow you to add a number of a number of functions to your actual um, to your actual material. So you can make something slightly more bouncy or slightly more uh, slightly more static or or all these different things that you want to do. Um, there's a number of different ways you can make things more slippery, uh, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going I'm to call this thing here um, slippery, I guess. Uh, I'm going to add this for a number of reasons. I want my character to be able to uh, slide down the sides. Am I still in 2D? I am. I want my character to be able to slide down the sides if he hits it, so he's not going to get stuck on anything. Uh, so I'm going to add a, a dynamic friction of zero. All right, so there's no dynamic friction. There's no static friction, so our character will start moving right away. I'm also going to add a slight amount of bounciness to this. I'm going to add um, 0.75 to my bouncy. Now, with that done, I'm going to go into my simple platform. Let me go into my project, and I'm going to go into my prefabs. And I'm going to, in my ground layer right here, I'm going to change my, on my collider, I'm going to change my physics material to slippery. All right, let's make sure this one's changed. Uh, physics material slippery. Now, great. Now, watch what happens now. When my character falls, he's going to bounce a little bit. All right, and that gives me like a little nice little, nice little boing boing, and he can start running right away. All right. There's still some adjustment to make uh, in in how in how quickly he moves from his uh, his land state uh, into his next one. I might want to actually run the land state a little faster, but that's all you need to do. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. Your character should now be running and walking and jumping and 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 uh, sneaking or whatever. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. If you have anything to say, let me know in the comments, all right? If, you've got, if you want to give me a thumbs down, that's perfectly fine. I prefer thumbs up, but if you really want to give me a thumbs down, then please let me know why, what I did wrong, so I can actually change it in the next episode. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.